Welcome back to The Express at the North Vancouver Museum. Their new exhibit, Entwined Histories, explores the significance of gift giving from a First Nations perspective. And we've got more on that coming up. But right now we're giving ourselves the gift of yoga and finding out how this ancient form of exercise is recruiting new yogis and yoginis every day. As you exhale, bow forward, folding the body to the legs, Uttanasana. Yoga is a great form of exercise with a variety of health benefits from increasing one's flexibility to building strength and balance. Charge up the outer edge of your left leg. Here at Y Yoga in Yale Town, I can definitely feel the burn. We'll definitely get more flexible doing yoga. And it's interesting, it's not just a flexible body that you get, you get a more flexible mind. Uh, there's strengthening aspects to doing yoga practice. There's many benefits for your nervous system. It's a great stress reducer. Uh, it can help if you're dealing with anxiety or depression. Many, many benefits from practicing yoga. But what does it take to be a yoga master? To really master yoga, I think, is to get to a place where you can really be at ease in yourself and in your body. Uh, there's lots of really advanced poses that you can do, but does that make you a master? I don't really know. Um, I think it's more about just having a deeper connection to yourself. It is just a constant reminder uh, to look for balance in my life. So sometimes it's a very uh, physical thing that I need. You know, I need to bring myself up. Sometimes, you know, I need to calm myself down. I find that when I practice yoga, I sleep way better. And so it definitely improves the quality of my sleep. It is the one thing that will bring you into balance physically, spiritually, and mentally without doing one at a time. Uh, physically, it's gotten me very flexible um, and more toned than before. Um, but I just love it. I swear by it. Makes me feel good. It makes me smile, and it makes me, uh, my aches and pains go away from other injuries. I felt fantastic after my yoga workout. It gets rid of any morning stiffness, and I feel more flexible already. I'm Alwena Shirley in Vancouver for The Express. Tanasana. There are seven Y yoga locations in BC. At the Yale Town spot, they also offer Pilates, core, and meditation classes. Now, since we're moving already, how about a little burlesque? Stag at parties are getting more and more creative, and today the wedding bells are trading in the night at the club for a sexy makeover. Hi, I'm Aubrey. And I'm Sarah. And we are the wedding bells. I just got engaged. And I did not. We're on an adventure to plan the big day. Okay. Let's face it, the stay get where the bride performs a list of embarrassing acts while bar hopping with a veil is old news. So I took Sarah to East Vanity Parlor for a great alternative. First off, the girls at the parlor glam you up. Well, there's five of us that work here. Okay. So a lot of times we'll have three girls getting their hair done, three girls getting their makeup done. So everyone's hanging out together, but they're all getting different things done at the same time. And then you get a burlesque lesson with Burgundy Brown. The first thing we did was... I am getting the five minute beehive. We're gonna work with what we got and it's gonna okay. be beautiful. Who's timing? This back in the day actually used to be called lacing. If you see it from the side, it creates these little S's almost. That looks like a tree. It looks like a trunk with branches coming out of it. Love it. I've done two things today that my granny would be thrilled about. I'm rolling a pie. I made a pie, and I'm getting beehive. I'm becoming a woman. And voila, there it was, my humongous five-minute beehive. They even provide a photographer, Ariel. She captured all the moments. And then it was Sarah's turn. So what are you doing with my hair? I'm going to give you a little Mad Men, Betty Draper inspired hairdo, <laughs> which are pretty popular right now. I love Betty Draper. Sarah loves her food, so of course she wanted to know. Do you guys bring the food and drink in, or does the get do it? We can cater for you. There's a restaurant just down the street from us that can do catering for us, or That's you can perfect. also bring in your own food. I think oh. I must look like my dog right now when he's getting his belly rubbed. This is such a fun idea for us to get. It totally beats the club. Our hair was finished and it was time for burlesque. 
tasties are the little sparkly bits that cover our lady bits. And then it was time to learn about tassel twirling. Both tassels going to the right. Boop, 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 boop. I can teach a man how to twirl tassels. <laughs> Okay, she was clearly a pro. Now for the dancing. We're all about the tease. You're gonna loosen your fingers just a tiny bit. Apparently, where you drop your glove tells the audience a lot about you. So I'm gonna throw mine right there. You secretly want somebody to pick that glove up and bring it back to you. Ooh! I feel like Michael Jackson. You wear your clothes so nobody has to get uncomfortable at all, and by the end, you've learned your first burlesque routine. Then the music started. Oh my God! This makes you want to do it. I thought so, Sarah. The snake coming out. I'm going to do the butterfly. Although I don't think I'll be wearing my Marge Simpson beehive out on the town, I would definitely plan Sarah's stay at the parlor. It was so much fun. Oh, I like it. For Shaw TV, we're the wedding bells. So you know, the term stay yet is strictly Canadian. The Americans say bachelorette party, and the Aussies call them hen nights. Little dose of culture for you, and we've got more fun stuff coming up. There's sort of a, a mecca to it. Up next on The Express. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. Wow. Cedar bark splitting at the North Vancouver Museum. Kepler has been used to find multiple star systems. The Kepler telescope at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. So uh, accurate, and it has so much detailed information to be able to look at. The Express. This is your local You've voice. You already told me that I can be the, the planet. I can be the planet Camui. Is that OK? Community programming on Shaw has been generously sponsored in part by Hairstyling and Color Services for Shaw TV, provided by The Lounge Hair Studio, loungehairstudio.com. When you wish, when you wish for something wonderful to happen, sometimes it can make you forget about the needles and the pain and get through this thing. Forget about being stuck inside. To laugh with my family? Go somewhere really amazing and get through this thing. The Children's Wish Foundation of Canada. Imagine the difference a wish can make. Welcome back to The Express at the North Vancouver Museum. Now we've been exploring entwined histories today and now we get to actually get a feel for it. That's right, we have a few of the items we're gonna have in the school program in front of us and here we see a roll of cedar bark. There's a lot that goes into making a mat like this and processing the cedar bark. So we pull it in large strips off the tree and the outer bark is removed. Here in the bucket we have some pieces that have been soaking and you can have a have a feel of it. It's it's kind of thicker when, it, okay. oh, when yeah. it comes off the tree. So before we can even um, work with the bark, we have to thin it again. So the way we do it is we use our thumbnail to in to yeah, and oh, we wow. pry it apart. And then there's sort of a, a method to it. We start at the other end. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's tricky. Wow. And then if you if you're really good at it, you might be able to split it many many times. If you're a novice, you might find it splits off uh, halfway down, and so it's a little, like here, this piece here is split off. I can't even get mine open. But then it, it gets split down so it's nice and thin. And some weavers, uh, like Susemia, who's featured in the exhibit, will process their bark even further. So she's uh, pounded this and shred it down for weaving and also treated it with some uh, grease. What does the cedar bark represent or the cedar tree itself? The tree is considered the tree of life and that's because all parts of the cedar tree are used from the wood down to the roots which can be used for baskets like this one to the cedar bark which was used for making traditional clothing and mats for the house and other types of styles of baskets. Well Sharon, I haven't had much luck splitting mine so I'm just going to make it into a bracelet. <laughs> there, cedar bracelet. Cute. Here at the North Vancouver Museum and Archives is one of the great interactive educational spots around the Lower Mainland. And we're hitting another one up next, learning about the Kepler Telescope at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. Well, hello there. We are warming ourselves over this light bulb here, but for a very good reason, because today we're going to talk about something called Kepler, which for a long time I thought was something that went on a Jewish sandwich. But it turns out it's some type of... It's a telescope. It's a telescope, the Kepler Telescope. Now, the Kepler Telescope is a little bit different than... Uh, um, say our telescope here or at the, the Space Fan or the, the Hubble Space Telescope. So how, how is it different? So Kepler is up there. It's not taking pretty pictures. 
and uh, it's just staring at stars. So it's kind of like an eerie, weird uncle. Yeah, it's like a stakeout. <laughs> it's just staring out into space. Staring at the stars. Okay, so what is, what is Kepler looking for? It's looking for transiting exoplanets. Exoplanets are planets beyond our solar system. Okay. So what a transiting exoplanet is, is that it's one planet which passes in front of the star in our line of sight. Okay, so it's another star someplace else that has a planet orbiting around it. And exactly. Uh, similar to what we do around our sun. But the difference is, is that it's passing and we can see the planet blocking some of the light out. Well, now that we have the proper mood lighting, uh, this would be a star. A star, and you've already told me that I can be the, the, planet. the planet. I can be the planet Kamui. Is that okay? Okay, okay. all right. Good. And um, is there a particular way that I orbit around this? Or? It varies. Let's okay. go this way. All right, so uh, that's, I'm going to try it. I'm going to be a, I'm gonna be a planet orbiting around the star. I'm go there through once, and I go around the other side here. I'm a lovely planet. I'm a red planet. I'm a happy, happy planet going past this star. So what, what, what did my two little rotations there actually tell us? So basically, by looking at uh, the frequency of how, of how often uh, the light dims, you can tell that, hey, there's a planet orbiting a star. So it can tell us the size and the mass and how far away the planet and the star are from each other. Kepler has been used to find multiple star systems, uh, star systems with multiple planets in them, like a, another solar system just like the Earth. Cool. Now, one of the neatest things that I've heard about this is that Kepler is uh, so uh, accurate and it has so much detailed information to be able to look at these light levels. Um, you, you were telling me an example. If, if I go out on my front porch and, and uh, turn so my So basically, light on. if Kepler was looking at the Earth at night as opposed to the stars, and you were to walk in front of your porch light, Kepler would say, hey, something went, on, went down there. Something dimmed on, on my house, which is great, because my porch light's burned out at the moment, so I can't be able to hide from Kepler. This is really cool. Now, um, I also wanted to mention that if you have uh, a question for us here at the Space Center, you can uh, tweet us at Ask an Astronomer. More information, and I'm sure that's uh, appearing down below, um, because we'd be interested in see what you folks are asking questions about. We have more than enough things to talk about, but it'd be great to find out what you folks at home might be uh, thinking about in the, uh, the science and space world. So be sure to give us a tweet if there's something that interests you. All right, thanks for explaining that. Uh, I'm Cam Cronin here for the Express at the H.R. McMillan Space Center. I'm Raminder Samra. And uh, yeah, Kepler, not a, a food item, but a telescope. If you'd like to win a family pass to the H.R. McMillan Space Center, be the first correct emailer now, expresscontest at shaw.ca, to tell us how sensitive the Kepler telescope is to light. And good luck to you. Now, obviously, that's a great spot for the family to visit, but we've got more ideas for you with today's Express Spotlight. Enhance your children's exposure to the art with North Band's live actor and puppet production of the classic fairy tale, Sleeping Beauty. The Concert Coffee Series was created to make high-quality, professional-level arts accessible to a young, growing community. Join Chad Brownlee in Port Coquitlam. Ballet BC's performance of Volo presents a mix of premier ballet performances. You can see it at the Queenie Theatre in Vancouver. And Entwined History's Gifts from the Maisie Hurley Collection runs until November 6th here at the North Vancouver Museum. We're going to leave you with a look at more from the museum, and we'll see you next time.